have Chang Yu Wang from the National High Field Magnetic uh, uh, Lab uh, to tell us about a neutral uh, magneto transform in the two bi layer graph game and straight into the open environment. Hello? Hello? Is it picking up? Yeah. It is? Okay. Yep. Um, so yeah, thanks very much. And first, uh, I would like to thank the organizers for this wonderful uh, workshop. I had great fun for the past couple of days. Um, and uh, uh, I would also like to thank very much for the ICAM for the uh, financial support for me to travel over here. Uh, so as the title suggests, I'm going to talk about the magneto transport properties uh, in uh, twisted bilayer graphene systems away from the magic angle. So uh, I will show you that uh, here, so this is the non-interacting non land where the interaction effects are weak. Um, however, I will hope to convince you that the string uh, plays a very important role uh, in reshaping the band structure. Uh, in, in TBG, and that can lead to very interesting uh, magneto transport behavior. So the work was done in collaboration with uh, David Goldhaber Gordon School. Um, and here is a nice story of uh, how theorists uh, go down to the to the cells uh, where they do experiments and then find uh, find uh, interesting, uh, in this case, really exciting projects to, to work with. Uh, Oh. So the motivation comes from this uh, uh, proceedings paper uh, earlier in the year uh, by, by our experimental friends. Uh, so what they did is they measured magneto transport for uh, a nominally um, 1.38 degree uh, angle of uh, the bilayer graphene system. And uh, what they find is the uh, Landau fan diagram, this beautiful Landau fan diagram emanated from the charge neutral point. Uh, which is associated with the uh, uh, Dirac point physics. And also, uh, it doesn't find the cascade phenomenon, which is observed in the magic angle devices. So uh, it's a, supposedly a weakly interacting system. What's unusual, however, uh, is that if I look at the low field mag magnetic magneto transport, so within this uh, large uh, 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 filling range and, uh, around the uh, uh, of radius, which is plus minus two, and then you get this huge enhancement uh, of the magneto resistance. And uh, doing a line cut, you can see that this black dash line uh, is this p-squared behavior. And you can see that spanning um, over more, over two decades, uh, it shows this uh, 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 non-saturating magneto transport behavior. So of course the question is, uh, uh, which is a theory question that's left unanswered in this question, in, in this paper, um, is that what, what drives this uh, unusual behavior? And in particular, would uh, haplo strain play a very important role in here? So, uh, so since the early days, uh, uh, haplo strain uh, uh, has been uh, uh, discussed in the literature uh, by various experimental groups, uh, which uh, here I listed here. So typically from SDM measurements or uh, visual uh, force microscopy measurements, uh, they can tell that uh, there's a small amount of unitary strain uh, corresponding to about 0.1% to uh, up to 0.7%. Uh, however, the thing is that despite such a small deformation on the atomic scale, uh, it gets enhanced because the Mori scale is, uh, contains on the order of 10,000 uh, atomic atoms. And uh, it was uh, very quickly realized, or it's just a very simple calculation, that uh, if, if I'm uh, at roughly about 0.2% of a strain at uh, this particular angle, and that's uh, roughly 10% of deformation of the Mori lattice structure. And uh, a key highlight, uh, of course, on, on from the energetic side, uh, is these two works, uh, again, done in the earlier days of twisted bilayer, uh, in which they showed that it has very interesting uh, uh, effects on, in particular, how the uh, Van Hoff points would look like, depending on uh, how I apply the string, uh, in this case, this uh, uniaxial hetero string. So uh, the phi is the, how that's aligned with respect to the, uh, the underlying uh, graphene lattice. 
And also, we get a relative shift uh, of, the, uh, of the Dirac point energies as well. However, what's not quite uh, discussed previously before our work uh, is that uh, the uh, energy contours uh, within this, uh, this broad region uh, over here is actually pretty interesting, and I hope to show you some results. Um, Uh, so, so, so again, to do this calculation, we uh, just uh, dug up the literature, and the most people in the community would c consider the uh, Fitzgerald or McDonald model, but uh, add string to that, and uh, the string would play uh, can enter in the form of the deformation potential, uh, as well as the pseudo magnetic field. And uh, uh, let's just focus on uh, the. Uh, the, the, the string effects on the constant energy map of one of the uh, uh, energy band uh, within the narrow band uh, 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 space. And for the unstringed case, uh, we get these uh, 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 three Vanhoff singularities at the same location. And in this particular calculation is at uh, this particular feeling, but uh, that one changes uh, if I change the band parameters. And uh, I get a relatively large bandwidth, as, as is seen over here, because this is away from magic angle. Um, and uh, the Vanhoff points separates closed uh, Fermi pockets surrounding the Dirac cones and the closed uh, holite pockets uh, centered at the gamma point. Now, just by applying a small amount of strain uh, in, in, in this manner, uh, you see that there is a dramatic change to the energy contours. Uh, in, in particular, the uh, C3 symmetry, which protects the energetic degeneracy of the Van Hoff points, are no longer there. And as a result, uh, you can see that the, uh, the three Van Hoff points shift to different feelings. And uh, for the lowest uh, Van Hoff point, closest to the charge neutral point, uh, that separates two uh, elongated uh, uh, um, uh, Fermi pockets uh, surrounding the two Dirac cones. And uh, there's an interesting intermediate region, which is already absent uh, from the unstrained calculation, uh, which is from this range 0 0.6 to 1.4, uh, where these two pockets form a closed pocket and a pocket that surrounds both Dirac electrons. And then further moving up in energy, so from the second and the higher most, one half point, one get this entire um, uh, open Fermi surface chains, which are elongated uh, along one direction. And, and, and finally, we reach this uh, region where, where we get uh, constant energy contours uh, surrounding the uh, uh, gamma point. Um, also, interestingly, the strain doesn't have much effect on the overall bandwidth of the system. So um, you can get various type of band structure uh, behaviors uh, simply for, for fixed uh, heterostring strength but simply by rotating how, how, how the string is applied relative to the uh, underlying lattice. What I show over here is you can see that this, uh, um, uh, this is uh, the density of states uh, as a function of energy for different uh, 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 uniaxial strain directions. And uh, this is uh, converted uh, as a function of feeling. What you see, you, you get this large open Fermi surface region that uh, uh, broadens and closes um, uh, depending on, really, only depends on how it's oriented. Uh, and uh, also, like to note in passing, if we go to larger uh, uh, values of the string, by larger is 0.5% really of the uh, string, you actually uh, can create a, a tilted type 2 Dirac cones. And uh, the, the, the details, why, how this happens, and uh, how that's uh, actually uh, one of the Van Hoff point also vanishes, and that's constrained by the topology uh, of, of this manifold. And if you're interested, uh, uh, we can definitely discuss that later. So, so right, so the, the key aspect uh, that I showed previously is that I have this uh, quasi one dimensional conducting channels in the vicinity uh, of the Van Hoff uh, split, energetically split Van Hoff points. So the question is whether they can give rise to the euro magneto transport properties. Uh, to do this, we take the motivation that from the experimental plot, so this, this is B squared magneto resistance uh, occurs before the onset of 
uh, uh, quantum oscillations. So that uh, allows us to do semi-classical Boltzmann-like calculations. And uh, in particular, uh, we do this with the constant relaxation time approximation uh, that has been used uh, by, by, by Allen's group uh, previously. And also we consider a entirely feeling independent relaxation time. And, uh, but to solve this equation in arbitrary magnetic field, we uh, resort to the, uh, this method called the method of characteristics. So essentially it, uh, um, um, so we, we're supposed to find a trajectory uh, that, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, the semi-classical motion of the electron uh, under the Lorentz force given by the magnetic field. And uh, one can easily show that this parameter, this S parameter parameterizes a constant energy contour. In the, uh, for a closed Fermi surface contour, um, and uh, the electrons just, just uh, go around, but for the open Fermi surfaces, uh, so it goes from one end of the Berlin zone to the other end, and then gets back scattered. And uh, we can just compute the non-equilibrium distribution function and, and then uh, we can calculate uh, what the, any given constant energy contour would give rise to, uh, to the connectivity, and, and that leads to this uh, nice expression uh, where the velocity uh, Vn uh, is the Fourier series uh, of, of this uh, Fermi velocity field on the contour with respect to this uh, S parameterization. So, so, so let's go to the physics. So, the, 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 the simplest scenario we have for a canonical parabolic dispersion is a saturating magneto resistance. And that can be seen easily by uh, you know, applying that expression and then we find the uh, textbook connectivity tensor and inverting that we get a, uh, uh, a saturating magneto resistance along the diagonal part and also a Hall resistance which is linear in B field. However, what's different for an open Fermi surface uh, is that generally there is a finite drift velocity because there's no symmetries protecting, uh, there's no in particular inversion symmetries, for example, that, uh, uh, that says that the velocity has to vanish on the open Fermi surface. And uh, this is the, uh, uh, one of the calculations of this, uh, the expectation value uh, of the Fermi velocity along the x direction for uh, both the open Fermi surface contours and also the close ones. And you can uh, clearly see a finite drift velocity here. So because of the finite drift velocity, the, the main difference, qualitative difference compared to the conventional case uh, is that we have a term that's not suppressed by this uh, uh, due to the magnetic field bending of the trajectory. And uh, so that would be the only term that's actually different compared to the con conventional scenario. And then inverting this matrix, uh, we, we get this B squared magnetic resistance uh, along one of the directions. And uh, along the direction with a finite drift velocity, uh, it's a saturating magnetic resistance. Okay? So this is the uh, main qualitative message. And uh, before I make a comparison to the experiments, so let me mention one thing, which is that uh, from a symmetry perspective, because the uniaxial hetero strain breaks the threefold rotational symmetry, and generically I expect, even in the absence of magnetic field, that the, connectivity, the resistivity tensor would be um, uh, non-diagonal. It has uh, off-diagonal symmetric parts. And uh, I can perform a rotation uh, of this uh, resistivity matrix, matrix uh, to, to find my principal transport axis. And uh, that is defined uh, to bring this uh, symmetric part of this uh, tensor to the diagonal form. And then on the off diagonal, I only have the Hall component. And uh, this rotation angle can be uniquely determined by, by, by this criterion over here. And of course, now comes to the comparison to experiments. Generically, because it's measured in the Hall bar geometry, which um, most likely would be misaligned compared to the principal transport axis. And uh, that means this entire tensor would be non-vanishing. And as a result, uh, one can imagine in the uh, regime governed by the open Fermi surface B squared, extremely large B squared magneto transport, uh, one would expect uh, this entire matrix to be, to, to, to be uh, affected by this B squared behavior as well. One minute, two question or two? Uh, that, 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 that. Oh, okay, I'm, I'm uh, almost, almost done. 
uh, three papers. So yeah, so this is a quantitative comparison to the transport uh, uh, experiment. These are the experiments for the whole number and the uh, uh, resistivity, and these are the theories. So uh, in addition to what I just described, this B squared behavior due to open Fermi surfaces, uh, there are additional features at the first Benhoff point, uh, which shows up as, as a non-analytic spike cusp-like behavior. And uh, what the experimentalists did uh, after, after we produced this is they went back and, and dug up their old data and see that if I increase the field from, from, from 0 Tesla to 0 0.5, the shoulder-like behavior does develop into a cusp-like behavior as well. And on the other hand, the whole number doesn't really show much uh, difference compared to unstrained case in the sense that I still have a, a sign change uh, once on either side of, of, of the feeling. And uh, also interesting thing to point out is that the single, sign change in singularity is not associated with any of the Benhoff points. Uh, with this point was also made in Alan's paper earlier. Um, so, uh, so this is the most interesting finding of our work, which is that if I have, uh, if I just look at how this uh, transport principle axis depends on feeling. Uh, it turns out that even for such a rigid band structure, no interaction effects, no anisotropies in the scattering rate, uh, we still get this dramatic rotation uh, of, of this uh, principle of transport axis. Uh, so that suggests that uh, maybe we should uh, try to do a careful re-examination on the strain effects and uh, try to properly distinguish that compared to the uh, electronic uh, pneumatic effects, for example. Uh, so we have a last slide. So this is um, the uh, uh, right. So so right. This is uh, so, so so that's so far so good. But then we ask whether we can do some have some predictive power for experiments. So in particular, we would like to highlight this intermediate region with uh, um, that goes from a two small pockets to a larger pocket surrounding the two Dirac points. You know that this is the region that's absent from. Uh, uh, unstrained uh, BM calculations. So what you see from the uh, quantum oscillation frequencies uh, is that indeed closer to the charge neutral point, uh, there are three frequencies. Uh, the third one is the sum of the two corresponding to a breakdown orbit, but then that abrupt, abruptly vanishes uh, at the first bound point, uh, corresponding to a, uh, which shows a clear Lipschitz transition into into a larger pocket. Um, so this would, uh, I guess, be a confirmation of this uh, energetically split bound points in the system. So with that, uh, sorry for going over time. Uh, let me just put the conclusion page over here. And, and, uh, I was wondering uh, generally whether there's hope of using the magnetos here uh, to extract such information from more systems. So um, th actually, that's uh, one of the things I would like to uh, think that's possible, in particular from the last page, where there are clear quantum oscillation experiments, which can tell you know, how the Fermi surface topology changes. There's a clear future. There's a clear feature shown, shown up on this line. Uh, so. Yeah, I think that can be measured from the, the frequency itself, right? So the frequency can be converted. Uh, I just said quantum oscillation would do the job, but uh, I wonder when the resistance could add. Oh, that, right. Um, so I've been trying to do some quantitative digging uh, into, for example, the B squared, the, the coefficient in front of the B squared yeah. dependence, whether that how does that depend on uh, the microscopic properties of the Fermi surface? And that turns out to be a mess at the moment. <laughs> so it's a little more complicated. One question about TCP set up. In organic superconductors, where you see both 1D and 2D Fermi surfaces, uh, the angle-dependent magnetoresistance oscillation has, all, 
has been used as a way to probe one different surface. I wonder if you can estimate maybe how you can see the signal in angular dependent on the resistance to determine the shape of an open frame surface. So, right. Uh, that's an excellent question. I don't know much about that, actually. I would love to learn more about the angle-dependent uh, magneto oscillations. And, uh, yeah. 